Ah, oh, that's better. A little bit of peace and quiet at last. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode here on the One More Block server. How are you all? I hope you're doing well. I hope everything is going okay for you. Let's get started. So, things have been going rather well for us today. Oh, good evening to you. Good afternoon. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to my humble abode. How are you? Or welcome back, I should say. We've seen you before. What have you got for me today? Oh, some glowstone. I would like that. There's a bit of podzol in it for me too. I see. Well, I think I can, uh, I think I can help you out there. Don't go anywhere. So there is a reason why we have been doing a load of farming and getting this episode off on the farmer's foot, and that is because I've been doing a little bit of work. Yes, indeed I have. So, finally, I managed to set something up. Here are two traders. We have got one that does vegetables and farm produce, and one that does mending. And not only do we have that, there's a little, there's a little wing just out the back here. Can't show you too much, but... <gasps> Where did he go? There was a zombie back here. I can't for the life of me work out how he will have died. He had a name tag on. He'd picked stuff up, he was wearing armour. He shouldn't have despawned. The only way through is that he's died, but he's uncovered. It was you, wasn't it? You killed a zombie that I needed. Well, that's not the worst thing to happen at the very least. If the zombie's dead, the zombie's dead, that's no problem. We have cured these villages a couple of times. The whole point of this setup is there was a zombie back there, and then there are some sticky pistons. You can just about see it with a trapdoor on them behind each of the workstations. When we flip these levers, the villagers would drop down, and then a zombie can attack them, turn them into zombie villagers, and then we can flip the pistons so they come back up, and then we can cure them, throw a potion of weakness at them, feed each of them a golden apple, and then when they are cured, they give us substantial discounts. So our farmer friend right here, not too bad. We can make an absolute mint off of this guy, especially with those pumpkins and melons there. That's a great deal. We can also buy golden carrots, possibly the best food source in the game, for one measly emerald a go, which is why... As I say, we've been doing all the farming here, so the f purpose of the wall as well, that gives us some XP, that allows that to escape from their chambers. So let's just trade away all these potatoes. We don't need any of these. My food is in a really good spot at the moment. So we'll give him all of those. There you go, sir. And I wonder, perhaps, will you give me a further discount on everything else? Indeed he does. He's knocked a little bit off of, uh, off of the price of carrots, so you can take all of these as well. Here you are. Again, I don't need these. Our food is in a great spot. There you are. I'm wondering... I can Actually, I can trade away the rest of these potatoes as well. You may as well have those. I don't need those. How about the other carrots? Have you refreshed? No? Fine. Well, let's, let's do the pumpkins. There they go. Let's do the melons. There they go. Wonderful. So we've got nearly a stack of emeralds out of one villager, which is phenomenal. That's so, 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 so good. Thank you very much. And now we come over to our librarian, who has got mending for five emeralds. That is such a great deal. I did have one that was doing them for one single emerald, but unfortunately he died through a whole heap of villager-related accidents. You know what I mean. Anyway, five emeralds for a mending book is sensational. And this one here, infinity for one emerald. That is really, really good. I've just realised I have no books, though. So maybe, well, actually, I've already got a load of mending books. More on that in a moment. All right, good morning. It is a brand new morning here on the server. And I have got some things to show you. There's been some other bits and bobs that I have done around here. So let's have a little chat about that. The first thing you might notice is this rather odd looking contraption back here. This is a fishing farm of sorts. So let's, uh, let's explain. In a patch in times gone by, fishing was made less overpowered. 
There used to be a time where you could just AFK fish and you could get all sorts of brilliant bits and bobs, but then they patched that out. And now, in order to get all the good stuff, you need to be fishing in open water, which is defined as basically this space right here. It's really inefficient. <laughs> let's, uh, let's actually get the rod quickly, and I'll show you what I mean. When you have the rod, you need to turn it on, first of all, by flicking the lever there. That sets off a clock, which activates this iron trapdoor just here. You'll see it pop in a moment. It pushes an observer in, and that does some of that. So we need to stand right on the edge of this hopper that we're on and right click on the note block. And then next time it activates, we cast our bobber and that lands in the water. And now we just have to wait another clock to our left fires and then we retract the rod and then throw it back out. Now we didn't actually catch anything there. We're just relying on the clock synchronizing with when we catch something. And that's why this is kind of inefficient because we're just casting and reeling in and hoping for success. So it's not as good as the fishing farms of times gone by. However, it kind of does the job. This can be AFK'd at as well. And that's kind of the only way you're able to. <laughs> because not a lot is happening. It should be said that this is only Lure 2, so it's not raining in as much stuff as it could, and it's not raining either. So we're not as efficient as we could be. We should just say that. So there is room to improve. Here's my chest down here at the moment. This is all I've gotten. The bows are not too bad. We can make something out of that. And then we've also got a rather decent book as well. Uh, and I think blast protection is one of the things I need to upgrade, so we might be able to use that at some point. But yes, that's the fishing farm. It does the job, kind of. Not really. <laughs> uh, I'll just kind of try and give you a look of what we got up here. So this is the clock that fires and gets us to reel our rod in once the farm is active. And over on the far side is a comparator clock that activates when we first start up the farm. The other thing I've been up to, you might have noticed just in the distance here, is a villager breeder. And this has given me so much problems. So many problems. It's given me so much problems I can't even remember how to speak English properly. This man right here has been causing me all sorts of chaos. So I'm just going to leave him to do his stuff because he makes me angry just to look at him. Similar for our two nitwits down here. These guys been causing me grief as well but they are at least here and as far as I know they are at least breeding as well. Here we have where the villagers are hanging out. There aren't any babies at the moment though. Well, that's fine they might not be ready to breed just yet that's okay. What we need to kind of keep an eye on is the amount of carrots in this chest 43. If that doesn't change for a while then we know that the farmer isn't throwing the carrots to his friends here and if he's not throwing the carrots to them they're not going to breed so hopefully we can make something work i mean i've got loads of villagers at the moment i'm not hurting there's still a couple up in the chalet up there as well so things are all right it's just the villagers have gotten a bit more difficult to work with since the last time i tried working with them now thanks to our nether trip in the previous episode I was able to get some blaze rods and it is because of these blaze rods that I have been able to obtain blaze powder and the advantage of having blaze powder is that I have been able to make an eye of ender which in turn has allowed me to create an ender chest and this has made transporting items to the shopping district and back so much easier. We're on our way to the shopping district now, actually, because I have something that I want to show you. And it's not everyone else's shops for a change. It's my own. So there is somebody on the server who is going to be responsible for opening a, an enchanted bookstore. However, the store is not currently built. So as a result, I have set up a little trader's hut right here in my own shopping plot. 
just a small little thing right here, a little a tent. This isn't going to be here forever. This is not our shop for the rest of the season. But let's just have a little look at it. We've got a tent, we've got some odds and ends around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. And I really, really like how this looks. This is a fantastic little nomadic trading spot. I really, really like it. I had to put all the trees and stuff back in. <laughs> Bearing in mind we spent ages clearing this area out. I have filled it all back in with trees. But it contributes to the theme of the shop. And when we eventually get rid of the nomad's tent and put our real shop here, we can clear all those trees out and do what we need to do. I also rescued this donkey from somewhere. It doesn't have a name. Anyway, here we are, the Ramblin' Trader. Sweet deals inside. Get them before they're gone. Now, I actually filled this chest up with a few mending books. And... Oh, and they have all gone. Oh, three diamonds per book. I only did them for three because this isn't my shop. Or, well, it is my shop, but I'm not selling what I should be selling. I've only put this here to fill a small gap in the market because everyone on the server wants those books and there's not an easy way to obtain them right now. So I thought I would just fill a gap in the market until, who uh, I can't remember who it is, I think it's Frouche, until Frouche manages to establish the shop. So there we have it. What a nice little tidy profit. Some may say three diamonds is a bit cheap, but you know what? I don't want to fleece the server. That's what my actual shop's going to do. <laughs> so the ender chest here, as you can imagine, stuffed with mending books for everybody. Here they are. Come and get them while they're hot. Three diamonds. You can't say fairer than that. And a nice 36 diamond profit as well. That is really, really good. We should find a safe place to store our shop profits. All right, that's our profits taken care of. Hopefully this turns into a nice lucrative deal for us. What we can do as well is perhaps look at other things as well. We don't have to just stick to books. If we can get any other valuables, we could certainly sell those for a discounted price also. Anyway, whilst we're here, let's have a look at this. Akari's Cafe. Look at this. What have we got? Sid's discounted items and Akari's freshly baked goods. And a couple of Skelebonies outside as well. And a sheep. Hello. You managed to escape Tav's slaughterhouse, I presume. <laughs> Alright, let's have a little look in Akari's cafe. What have we got in here? Well, ain't this cute? Look at it. Oh, I love... Oh, the cake. Look at this. I... I love the builders on this server. Look at them, they're doing so well. The place is looking brilliant. It's a display counter! <laughs> oh, it's so, so good. I love it. I love it. It looks very, very nice indeed. Look at the outside here. Like the barrels with the plant pots and the bamboo and the bush. I love them. Absolutely love them. Oh, this has a frontage now as well. Millionaire. Now, I believe Grimes has set this up. Blockhead Millionaire. To sign up, name a diamond block Ooh, and place it in the chest. Answer 15 questions to get a grand prize of 64 diamond blocks. Three lifelines, 50-50. Ask the chat and Discord a friend. Ooh, anyone playing yet? Oh, no one's signed up yet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. I wonder what the questions will be about. I don't know. I don't fancy my chances. Should we should we sign up? Should we become should we attempt to become a millionaire? Could give it a go. But I'm not confident. Limited stock? Oh, well, they've all gone. <laughs> I think this is Jets Jets's uh, rocket shop for people with elytras, of which I am not one. Now, what I would like to work on is the front gates for our base. I have a couple of ideas in mind, and I think it would work out well for a time lapse. Whilst you guys watch that, I'm going to keep an eye on this guy and see if he actually encourages his friends down here to make babies.
good news, everyone. It seems as if the villager breeder is now working. Yes, we have finally had just a little bit of progress. The farmer now throws carrots to the villagers. We've had some drop through and the villagers make babies. And as you can probably hear, <laughs> things have been going very successfully indeed. To the point where I've started ferrying them out, as you can see from this minecart track here, I've started ferrying them out over to our zombification chamber right here and currently we're focusing on getting some librarians together so we can get some really good enchanted books out of them and then they get ferried off to this little shed right here where as you can see i've got a whole heap of librarians at our disposal featuring some pretty good trades all in all loads of enchanted books so that we can get some of the best armor available We've got plenty of paper trades as well, so we can earn the emeralds. This guy right here does mending books for one solitary emerald, which immediately outshines that guy over there. So he's just my paper trade now. Sorry about that. Also, I expanded a little bit out of the back here just to create a small little cactus farm. And it's not the most efficient thing in the world. It works by just like that. A cactus grows and then the fence post pops the cactus off and it's possible that the cactus will get destroyed by another one as you can see there. However on occasion it will pop off into the water supply and then down into our chest below. So it does work automatically but only just. Before we finish this episode I thought it would be a good idea to see what the gates look like as we approach them from the direction of the entrance to our base. So we've just left the village that Jets has taken all the villagers from so that we can see what our gates look like. You can see them looming in between the trees just there. Remember, we'll probably get people to follow this pathway down. Oh, ho, 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 there they are. Look at that. Now, you will have noticed I've added the banners with our name on them. And I'm not 100% sold on that right now. I don't know if that's what I really want. I might try the banners in a few different positions. And if I can't find one that works, then we will get rid of them and find another use for them. But I really, really like how these look. I think they look really good. And then we'll have ourselves a bridge that just leads across so that you can go underneath them just like that and then from behind they look more or less the same just without the the banners on there obviously there'd be no point having them on the back now would there but i think they look really really good i've begun to challenge myself a little bit as we've kind of elaborated on already i don't want to just build with wood the way that i always do so i went out we gathered a whole heap of sand and sandstone on a live stream just to try and test out how that would look. I've gone into terracotta. I'm not normally one for building with terracotta, nor even the concrete, but I would like to try and move out into that for this series. And brick as well. You'll notice, there we are. <laughs> You'll notice we've gone for brick to cap each of the pillars right here. Now brick I have never used in this game in my life. Never. But I thought I'd maybe give it a go and see how it looks. And I think given how we have the warm colours from the terracotta, from the glass, even from the lava inside, I think the brick just about works. <laughs> I'm not sure if it completely works, but I think it works enough for us to be able to get away with. The problem is that brick is a very loud texture in this game, in my opinion. It's not got there's not many colours to it, but it's quite a difficult pattern to work with, in my opinion. So I never really use it, but I think that, like I say, it just about works for these gates. I did decide while we were looking at it there that I think I prefer the back to the front and I think that's largely because of the banners. So I think I will move the banners. Whew. 
So I think I will remove the banners from the front and we'll find a different use for those somewhere else. Maybe we'll be able to use them for our shop or something like that. I think the problem is that the banners don't really suit the arch that well. Because the arch is curved but the banners are blocks and the letters are all on the same plane on that banner, if that makes sense. It looks weird trying to make an arch out of that very blocky lettering and the very blocky banner shape. So we may just have to try and find a place where we can put them up without a variation in the height of the lettering. Just a quick trip back to spawn. Just to round things off, I want to see if we have sold any more stock from our shop. Let's see if we've made some diamonds. I expanded the range. No one's too interested in the golden carrots or the name tags. I don't know if it's a pricing thing, but I think three diamonds for a stack of golden carrots is pretty good. However, if people aren't interested, then we can find something else. And you know what? In fact, I think we're going to do that. I think we'll take these back because I do have something that I can use to replace the stock in there. Any more mending books gone? Not quite, not quite. Okay, well that's alright. I've got plenty here. So we're going to go for some more mending. We'll just pop some more in there. And oh, I haven't got eight to fill out that space. I've only got seven now, I think. So let's just, let's just go for six. We'll keep one of them back for ourselves. And we'll just put the rest in here to make a nice little pattern. There we go. Fantastic. And then in this one back here, let's go for the other one. So we'll take the Fortunes, one of my favourite families. And then we will take... Oh, I didn't want to do that, but we can do that anyway. That's fine. I'll just have to remember to set my spawn back at home. And we'll take the Silk Touches as well. We'll put those right... Well, not there. Ugh. I've got to move them. We'll put those there. There we go. Silk touches, fortunes, three diamonds per book. Can't say fairer than that. Uh, we should probably change the name of our shop here as well, because we, we, we're mostly just specialising in books, so maybe we should put this as the wandering librarian. That might be a better... a better name. Alrighty, as we return home back to our villagers and our brand new entrance gates, we are going to call it an episode. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I'm very interested to know what people's feedback is for the gates. So if you do have any, then please feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought. We are going to carry on working between the episodes. I have got a couple of plans in mind. Firstly, I need to get some sort of mushroom farm up and going because these weakness potions that we need to cure our villagers, they're kind of expensive. They need brown mushrooms, they need spider eyes. Spider eyes aren't too much of a problem, but mushrooms, mushrooms are. So I need to kind of get a mushroom farm or at least gather up some more mushrooms. So I am going to work on that. I am also going to attempt to expand our village shed right here get some more awesome trades and keep the money flowing. Look at this, we are doing really well on the old emerald front. We'll be able to have an emerald bottomed beacon, boots with the fur, all that stuff before too long. And of course, we have our grand gates over there. I think they look really good from a distance, which is a bit of a backhanded compliment, I must admit. <laughs> but I think they look really, really good from afar. I don't know what it is about them, but they do look good. In the meantime, I am also going to continue to work on the frontage just here. Maybe we'll get some buildings put up, maybe like a little ticket office, or some bridges, some roadways, and that kind of thing. Just to give a little bit more life to the front. And of course, we will keep working around our home here. Farming things up, mining, you name it. All the grindy stuff back here all the fun stuff down the front. I think that's going to be a plan indeed. Now that we're having to travel further to do work on our base, we should probably think about a faster way to travel, i.e. an elytra. So maybe we should do that in the next episode. What do you think? 
Once again, everybody, thank you so very much for watching. Do leave a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment letting me know your thoughts. And if you haven't done so, maybe you'll consider hitting the subscribe button as well and joining us for the rest of our One More Block adventure. If you want to catch up on some of the stuff that happens behind the scenes, we do loads of stuff over on Twitch. So go and give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash tacproductions and you will stay up to date with all the One More Block shenanigans as well as some other sorts of stuff we get up to. Until then though, thank you so much for watching, take care, have a good day, bye! I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's pretty. pretty.